It's gonna happen. It's gonna get put back together. It's gonna run. It's gonna drive. It's gonna be sick. We're gonna do some drifts. Do some maybe take off a sweet jump. The collectors probably won't like that, but I don't care. It's mine right now. And if somebody wants to drive the shit out of it when they become the next owner, then they'll know that it is fully capable of doing so. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to defeat this pulley and take the rest of the engine apart. Last week, if you'll remember, giving me some problems. And uh, I think today, I've got the right tool for the job. Also had a, a nice margarita about 20 minutes ago, so I'm feeling pretty good and feeling pretty positive. So I think we're in a good place to make a successful disassembly video. So without further ado, let's get to it. So, if you'll remember from last time, it wasn't responding to crying, it wasn't responding to tappy taps, it wasn't responding to anything. So today, <clears throat> I borrowed a little something something from work. The Mini Doctor 2 flameless heat system. It's an inductive heater. It uses angry pixies to heat metal things up and make them come apart. So hopefully I don't end up frying my phone because one of my coworkers actually fried a pair of his headphones using this tool. It definitely tells you to not use it around a metallic object, rings, watches, body piercings, medical, surgical implants, etc. And definitely don't use it near a pacemaker. So luckily I don't have any of those things. Hopefully it doesn't fry my Apple Watch and hopefully it doesn't uh, fry my camera because that would really suck. But we're going to try this, make some smoke happen, and I think that this is going to be the ticket. Talking to a coworker saying that this should just come right off. So I know because it's been sitting for about 20 years that our old friend, Mr. Rust, has formed a solid bond all the way around the perimeter of the inner brace of that pulley. Let's uh, get this hooked up to some power and uh, start frying some stuff. Hopefully the right stuff though. All right, so I've got the camera about six feet away from the engine. Hopefully that's enough. I should probably take my watch off too. Just to be safe, no electronics near me. And then wrap this around. There we go. And uh, contact. Now it's been a long time since I've uh, been in a physics class, so I can't really explain to you how exactly this worked. But uh, if you'll see, there's already a bunch of steam from the WD-40 burning off, emanating from this. So I think as soon as I let this cook for about, I don't know, 15, 20 more seconds, I really don't want to heat it up too much because I don't want to burn this plastic cover. Woo, doggy. Very spicy, but it's working. So we'll take that off. It's already hot enough. Uh, find ourselves a suitable frying device quickly. It's kind of a forethought, but if we can. Great success. Oh, Man, that was really spicy. It burned some grooves into my Mighty Carmod's work gloves. But talk about a victory. If you remember from the last video, I struggled with that for like I don't know, on video it's probably gonna be like two minutes, but I was out here for like 45 minutes trying to get that pulley off. And this tool does it immediately with no tappy tap, no prying, no nothing. So I uh, don't wanna make an ad for a tool that I'm not sponsored by, but I'll be damned if that doesn't work like it's supposed to. Now, one thing that I do wanna keep track of is timing mark. And uh, this pulley looks like it could be installed 180 degrees out because those holes are not offset. I think for now, now that we've got the unfriendly pulley off, we can go ahead and hook ourselves up with a ratchet and uh, start where we left off last time, which was trying to pull this cover off. So I think what we'll do is we'll pull this plastic cover off, get the belt, well, the pulley and the belt off of the Google first year pump and uh, take front cover off as much as we can. We'll probably have to take crank pulley off first, so we might end up having to take the oil pan off because I'm going to have to 
I don't really have access to a, a good pry bar at the moment, which I would normally just lock the flywheel with the pry bar, but I'm thinking I'm gonna be taking the oil pan off because it's disgusting and covered in like a quarter inch of schmoo and I would like to clean that and paint it. So since we'll have the crank counterweights exposed, we can just hit those with a, shove a piece like a two by four in there or something to uh, lock the engine up and break this crank pulley bolt loose. Nut, I should say. It's not the bolt. Because once we get this all disassembled, I'm not taking the rotating assembly apart. I'm just going to take the cylinder head off, take it out to a machine shop, and just get it checked. It's been sitting for a long time, so I think it'd probably be a good idea to throw a new set of valve seals in there, just so it's something I don't have to worry about when I put it back together. Have them hot tank the, the head and clean the ports out, because they're a little dirty. And I just think that overall, once we get it put back together, the engine will be thankful that I did that. Okay, well, I wonder if I can, uh, the belt is looking pretty good. I may end up replacing that just because, but we'll make that decision when we get to that reassembly stage. That's a new set of wings. I'm wondering if I just smack that with an impact. Apologies in advance for the noises. Let's see if it just comes off. Just like that. And luckily enough, there are timing marks associated with this. We've got a mark right here and another one on top of this aluminum cover. So I think we're in good shape to just pull this off and uh, then we can take the oil pan off, put a piece of wood, block the crank and uh, break this crank nut loose because I, I know on an M20 it's like 350 foot pounds and I'm not sure if that's roughly the same on an M10 or not. I haven't done a lot of M10 disassembly in my past, so we'll see what happens when we get there, I guess. And I think I can take the front cover off with the Kugelfischer still attached, so not worried about even taking that pulley off right now. I can do that at work when I've got the guidance of qualified professionals, even though I should be that, but I don't have a service manual in front of me, so I'm just going off precision guesswork. Let's get this front cover off. Because my real goal today is just to take the cylinder head off and take the front cover off so I can fresh wash that or hot wash that and uh, take the cylinder head down to the machinist. I should probably drain the oil, so I'll go ahead and do that first when I was tipping it over, the studs not being in place, it leaked oil out. And I am, I don't know if I've said this yet, but I am working in my mom's garage, so I prefer not to ruin her garage floor any more than I've done in the past 15 years being a car enthusiast and building stuff in these stalls. Alrighty, grab bar 13. Ratchet down. Break these bad boys loose. Probably should have left some hardware in there to break the timing chain tension loose, but uh... Whoa, Doug. Three, two, one. We got it. That was really freaking tight. Holy crap. Now what size are you? I'm pretty big. Well, it's this size, which 27. I can't believe that still is full of oil and it's disgusting. Oh, now we're dripping off the missing stud too. Several years ago, I was driving through the Broadmoor and one of my exhaust studs fell out on the silver car. Still had the M10 in it at the time. And uh, I looked back behind me in my rear view mirror and it was like a freaking James Bond movie. It's like I just enabled smokescreen for the past you know, half mile that I had driven. And uh, as soon as I came to a stop, I got passed by a gigantic smoke cloud and I thought my car was on fire. Popped the hood, saw oil everywhere saw that a stud was missing and ever since then been very aware of the fact that 
and 10 oil or exhaust studs go through into the oil gallery. Silly beamers. I also don't want to speak too soon, but uh, I'm wearing pretty decent clothes today. You know, they don't have a lot of dirty marks all over them. And considering the amount of dirty work I've done so far today, I don't have any marks on any of my clothes. Knock on wood. We'll keep it that way. Seems like we're fairly close to having all of our engine oil out, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick the temperature sender drain plug assembly back in. Obviously, I'm gonna be taking all this off and cleaning it so that crunch is not really that big of a deal. Okay, we'll pull the block drain out and uh, see what we get out of there. Hopefully not much. Oh, nice. Nothing significant is coming out of there, so I think we're okay. Let's uh, get this injection pump out of here. All right, now that we've got the fluid situation handled, we can start taking apart the uh, injection pump assembly. Get the pump off and then get the front cover off and then start taking the timing chain assembly apart. Hell yeah. <laughs> Makes a TII, a TII. The Kugel Fisher injection pump. Now we've got ourselves a naked timing cover. So I guess it's time to flip this buttercup over and take the oil pan off. Now I'm well aware this is probably gonna make a gigantic mess, so I think we're probably gonna try and put some cardboard down. This ancient toolbox topper from many years ago will work just fine. Wait for it. Wait for it. Contact. That's all she takes. <laughs> Break this bad boy loose. Get this out of the way. Get this cover off. Do the cylinder head bolts and get the head off. Punk rock. That will do just fine. All right, in three, two. Oh yeah, that was definitely not 300 cubic foot pounds. Tell you that much. One more little tappy tap. After first making sure that all of our hardware has been removed out of the front cover, which it looks like it has. And there we go. TI M10 timing cover. Very large piece of aluminum, I won't lie. Flip the engine back over, take the timing chain off. You know, I might even not take the timing chain off because I don't really see the point. Everything looks like it's in really good shape. Tensioner rail looks okay. Guide rail looks okay. head bolts loose, get this cylinder head off, and then we're done for today. I think for right now I'm kind of stoked on getting the head off, so I think that's what we're going to do next. 19 mil. Now this in itself is kind of a big moment because I don't actually know which pistons are in this engine. I know they're high compression Euro TII pistons, but there are two different variations. And I know only one set works with the TII or the E12 head, but I can't remember which one it is. So. Let's find out. All right, moment of truth. It's full cylinder head. Oh, yes. Oh, 
Oh, boy howdy, was it a good idea to pull this cylinder head off. The area I'm concerned about is this right here. It's a nice chunky coolant schmoo where it is dried. Now, it's probably not that big of a deal just because it's been sitting for so long, but it's definitely something that uh, I'm not going to take lightly. And I will definitely be thoroughly inspecting the cooling system, cooling passages, everything, just to make sure that we're not gonna have any problems when we put this back together. Another head gasket up. Go. Now, before we end this video off, let's take a look at this cylinder. Everything really looks great. There's some coolant schmutz in here just from stuff drying out, but I'm hoping once I take this down to the machine shop, they'll be able to clean all this crap up and uh, make everything look pretty and new. Combustion chambers themselves look great. They're low carbony, but that's to be expected on a 50 year old fuel injection system. Thank you very much for coming along on another episode of the John Loblin YouTube channel. I love you.